this, but we want you to get excited about the potentials of your freezers looking yeah, like that's this. That's why we break it down to the nitty gritty, and we're honest with you, and we tell you that it's not always going to be the cheaper route. Right. Hey y'all, welcome to Stiver's Homestead. I'm Zach. And I'm Jeff. And we have an exciting day today. So we had our um, young bull sent to the butcher about almost exactly two weeks ago. They're very quick and very efficient. And today it is time to go pick him up. Yay. So stay tuned. You're about to see how much a 18 month old bull looks like Angus Jersey mix. We're going to break down the cost and we're going to show you all the goodies. Let's do it. You can't even see. <laughs> Get it, what? All right, we are back home with T Bone. Uh, went smooth as always. Uh, we love that place. They're called Moonlight. Is it just Moonlight Butcher? Moonlight Meat, I think. Moonlight Meat. I'll have a link down below. Seriously, the nicest people that you'll ever meet. Uh, they're homegrown, small town, uh, small business. It's not a big commercial butchery or anything like that. Awesome people. If you're anywhere even slightly close, I would highly recommend going to them. Yeah, they're in Williamsburg. Yeah, Williamsburg, Kentucky. So if you've been going to other places, give this place a try. They get you in quick. They do you right. I'm going to get to the prices here in a little bit. Um, but yeah, you won't regret it. You won't want to go anywhere else. All right, let's see what T-Bone looks like now. Okay, so we brought all of this, and as you can tell, it completely fills up a back seat. Now, this one and this one's full. We didn't need that one, but they're maxed out. So let's get this out here. Oh my gosh, I can't even move it. Hang on. All right, and box number one. Here is all of the stuff. Like, here is New York strip. We got it three quarters inch. Here's the chuck roast. Here's the beef ribs. Here's more beef ribs. Night. Here's a flank steak. Ribeye. Skirt steak, ribeye, bone in, nice. That's more ribs. Lots of ribeyes. Lots of New York strip. Yep, New York strip. Um, this is sirloin. Nice, sirloin. The chuck roast. And there is the start of a whole lot of ground beef. Filet mignon. Oh, nice, filet mignon. We're gonna have like ground beef for life. Yeah. These ribeyes look really good. Yeah, they look do. at that. Uh, if you've ever seen a tomahawk steak, that's kind of what this looks like. Just thinner, three quarter inch. And then the bottom is the start of the ground beef, but that whole cooler is all ground beef. <laughs> <laughs> Box number two. Ground beef for life. For life. <laughs> <laughs> Underneath here are a lot of bones um, that we're going to use. Uh, they call them soup bones, but you know, ultimately it's going to be like broth and will be probably soup bones for us as well too, but uh, primarily beef yeah. broth. I think some are one pounds, other are two pounds, or some are one and a half pounds, but that is going to take us a lifetime to go through all that ground beef. <laughs> but it's a good problem to <laughs> There's have. There's just four of us. <laughs> and Jed sometimes, but he doesn't eat every meal that we cook. So. <laughs> this is good. This is good, good, good. Here it is on a four by eight sheet of plywood. We have 148 packages. Of packages. Pounds. Some are a pound, some are a pound and a half. Right. And we're about to do how much we have of everything else, but just kind of giving you an air, aerial view of how much food that is. This is probably three years worth of meat for us, for four people. <laughs> That's a good problem. It is, but I don't know where we're going to put it. <laughs> That's our deep freeze. <laughs> <laughs> <It's not evident. laughs> so we started with the ground beef it's all on the bottom and everything else is oh it filled. comes out to about here yeah about there in ground beef and then the rest is everything else um, it does shut and we put a weight on it this heavy pile of stuff to do that and this is what left it held a lot more than i thought it was going to Me too. um we're sitting here talking about having to go get another freezer this pile we're taking in yeah i think we can put the roast in our pantry freezer Plus those, hopefully. And problem is, here's the problem. We take this out to make room, which it's a lot of frozen milk that's very small, so that's not a huge ordeal, but it is a big size tote that we also have to put in the freezer. 
we'll take this out. All right. I'd maybe agree with you if we didn't have the other tote. <laughs> These ribs. I got a toe. Oh, we got some three. How many more? That's it. That's it. Hang on, I gotta rearrange real quick. Oh, this is for the chickens. Got this. Thing. Yeah. I ain't got no room for what's sitting on the chicken. Yeah. So, Okay, I'm not even gonna open that up because it'll all come flying at me, but I'm gonna make sure it stays sealed. And then Jen's over here, she I'm dead. <laughs> Where are you at, babe? No, I'm I like a mad dash. So you I want can't... anything to fall and you don't want your freezers to stay open. If there was two more pounds of anything, wouldn't have happened. Wouldn't have happened. Um it, it, when I came in when me and Rayla came inside, she just threw milk at me and said, Don't put it in the fridge. I didn't even get to take my boots off. <laughs> we did it. We did it. Somehow. Only thing that didn't make it was a couple pizzas we're and we're gonna eat it. We're gonna eat some pizzas. <laughs> Alright, it's the next day and we're about to get into the pricing, but we couldn't resist and couldn't wait. So we have already cooked some T bone steak up. It's filet mignon. Filet mignon. From T Bone. So we are gonna try it out and see what we think. Mm. Wow, you have a really bright light on you. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Alright, so here it is. I already ate mine, it's fantastic. Medium, it's beautiful, it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Pickle. <laughs> so good. <laughs> and so I'm actually, good. I'm actually eating broccoli. Um, I haven't told y'all, but Broccoli is all literally my favorite food ever. It is. Absolutely. It, it does love broccoli. Like okay. it's better than ice cream to me. <laughs> <laughs> fantastic. Fantastic thing. This is so good. So good. So I know a lot of people were concerned um, that because he was a bull, he was going to be tough. Mm -mm. Well, if that flame and young, which obviously is the best cut of the, of the cow, it is melting your mouth tender. All right. We're going to eat this now. Now time for the fun part. So we've gotten T-Bone back. Get all the meat put in the freezers, max that bad boy out, uh, all of them, everything that we have. Um, tasted him for the first time. Oh my gosh. Delicious. So amazing. Uh, we'll give you more reviews when we're eating the not so nicer cuts uh, because obviously filet mignon should be very good, but that was fantastic. So now it's time for the breakdown. If you're thinking about doing this or if you're thinking about buying a cow from a farmer, this will be helpful as well um, because you'll kind of understand some of the farmer's cost. So when you get a price tag, you know, it's his covering what they did, plus making a little profit because the farmer raised it. So let's get down to the nitty gritty. Okay, so T-Bone was over 400 pounds hanging weight. Now, there's a few different things that go into play with when you go to a butcher. You have weight of animal. So that's a, a lot full weight. You're not getting anything near that weight. So let's go ahead and make that clear. You got to think about it. You got the head, you got the skin, which cattle skin itself could be over 100 and something pounds by itself. You have all the legs, the bones, the insides that you don't keep, you know, just the innards. Um, that's a lot of weight that you're not getting back in meat. So you got to keep that in mind. And then you have hanging weight. That's after they've been processed for the most part, but they're just cut in half and they're hanging. So T-bone was a little over 400 pounds. Now when it came down to the, actually what we got out of him. I'm going to tell you the ground beef first, um, but like she had mentioned, we had one pounds, one and a half pounds, and two pound packets of ground beef that were in there. So when I give you this number, know that that's not reverted right to poundage. We had 148 of those, yeah. which is absolutely amazing. So there's 52 weeks in a year, so you can kind of do your own math. That's a lot of ground beef for us for a very long time. Especially for a family of four. Especially, yeah, no kidding. We got eight chuck roasts. We got four skirt and flank steaks. We got seven New York strip. Okay, and sorry, let me rephrase this too. Everything was packed for two people. So mm -hmm. all these items have two steaks and two pieces in them for a family of four kind of thing. So four packages of skirt and flanks, seven packages of New York strip, eight packages of sirloin steak, 14 packages of ribeyes, 
nine filet mignon packages, four sirloin tip roast packages, two briskets, which it's one brisket, but I had them cut it in half because kind of like the pork butt situation, we don't need to eat a whole yeah. beef brisket. Um, we got five bags of soup bones, which is going to be great. And then the beef ribs, but it was in seven packages because they cut them up into smaller portions. So that is a lot of food. It's about three years worth of meat for us. It really is. It's a lot. Now the, the steaks, we'll probably go through quicker because yeah. we love steak. Um, but we'll still probably try to limit ourselves to just eating one steak night a week or every other week or something like that so we can spread that out. But the good stuff, the stuff that just gives us girth, like you said, about three years worth. All right, y'all ready to get into some pricing? We bought T-Bone last July, July 2021 is when we purchased him. We purchased him from our good friends, uh, Little Feet Farm, and we bought T-Bone. He was specifically $500. That's what his cost was. Of course, we bought three other cattle, um, but he was $300 or $500. He was about... Nine months old. Yeah, nine months old when we purchased him. We didn't even have him for a full year. So we uh, sent him to the butcher this... It was, it was January when he actually went out it was January and so that resulted down into him being around 18 ish months um, is just kind of our best guesstimate of his age it was about 18 months old so he wasn't an overly old cow so we didn't have to feed him for as long as maybe if you would be if you were growing a steer up from calf all the way to butcher but we did have the cost of purchase purchase him in the first place doing the math of what he cost us to buy what the butcher cost, which remember was only $300, which was amazing. And then we broke down the cost of feed and hay um, that we fed the total of four cows. We made him a quarter of that. Um, the total price of him was $1,461. So that's $500 for the price to buy him, $300 for the butchering. The rest was for feed and maintenance from us. The one thing that we didn't include was any kind of fencing. Like we didn't include fencing prices and stuff like that. It was strictly what went into him. Okay, so then for the cuts of meat, I went to uh, Kroger and Walmart. We didn't go to anywhere fancy like Whole Foods or something like that. We didn't want to like jack this price up, um, even though it should be because it's, you know, very organic yeah. meat. Um, we wanted to get, if you just went to Kroger or Walmart, what would you pay for something like this that just at least had a label of organic? So total, the total price, if you bought every ounce of meat that we had at Kroger and Walmart, nothing special. And we were very conservative. <laughs> very conservative. We, and we're going to get to a point here in the case, but that total price was $2,857. That's almost $1,400 more than what we have in the T-Bone is how much that would have cost at the store. That's mind blowing. Now we did not get into meat animals or even homesteading in general. Um, for life to be cheaper and if you talk to any homesteader or farmer they will tell you that it is substantially not cheaper you put a whole lot more money time and energy into growing food for your family whether that's animals or garden um, and you come out on the negative side but it's more positive because you say well I grew this from scratch T-Bone wasn't from scratch for us, but most of his time was spent Right, here. we knew where he was raised. Um, and you know what you're putting into your body. So no, it's not cheaper, <laughs> but it's healthier and it's more fulfilling. However, in this situation, we were very surprised that it actually turned out to be cheaper. Yeah, I mean, it's, it is mind-blowing because we all, you, you keep hearing everybody talking about how there's empty shelves at the grocery store, the prices have gone way up. Um, it's insane. And I guarantee you, about three years ago, that would have been flip-flopped. Mm -hmm. We would have had a loss of probably $1,400. And like she said, this is just because we want to be cleaner. We want to know what we're eating. And now this is just even more reason to do this. If you can say $1,400 on meat by raising your own, plus it's the best quality that you can possibly have. I mean, my goodness, what, what what's holding you back, yeah. right? Uh, the biggest thing I know everybody's gonna say, especially for cattle, is we don't have the room for them. But we have preached and preached and preached. There's farmers like us that would be so happy to grow one out for you and then just figure out an agreement on pricing with them and then do it that way. Yeah. Still. And even if you don't want a whole cow, you can get a group of your friends or your mm -hmm. family together, say your parents or your brothers and sisters, and you can all go in on one cow. Yeah. And then you don't have to have this abundance like we got that may take you forever to work through, but you've got your portion of the cow that allows you to be able to eat cleaner meat. Yeah, absolutely. 
So this moment right here is the addicting part of growing your own food. Yeah. It's like when you, if you're a vet or a gardener and after you've put up your pantry, you know, at the end of the year, you're like, that is what's addicting. And then this part is, you know, it was rough, right? It was rough raising T-Bone. He was out almost every single morning. It caused some arguments. <laughs> Lots of arguments. She's like, why did it even get cattle? You know, like those things like come up. You start questioning like, should we just get rid of all of them because it's such a struggle? <laughs> Um, it postponed a lot of projects because yeah. we was wasting time on fencing and T-Bone. But right now, having our freezers absolutely full, knowing that we are not going to go hungry mm-hmm. whatsoever, uh, and knowing that that's just part of our food preservation that we have, it's like, man, we could do this. Like, we could do it. We don't have to worry about the grocery stores being empty, and we're saving money doing it. Yeah, it's an amazing feeling to look at your family and your kids and be like, We've got it covered. Yeah. We got it. it. And that's not bragging. That's us. That's why we're telling you this because we want you to be able to do the same. Yeah. I was actually just getting ready to say this. Obviously, we're very excited because it's sitting in our freezers. But we want you to get excited about the potentials of your freezers looking yeah, like that's this. That's why we break it down to the nitty gritty. And we're honest with you. And we tell you that it's not always going to be the cheaper route. Right. But it's the more beneficial route. Yeah. Just right now, it's much freaking cheaper. <laughs> One thing that I, I forgot to add, so it was $300, but that's because we did not do USDA butchering. Yeah. USDA butchering, which the same people can do it, mm-hmm. it's just a little bit more of a detailed process. USDA uh, butchering allows you to sell mm-hmm. that meat. But if you're just having home process, don't do that. You know, if you're not going to sell the food that you have and you just want it for yourself, it's going to be much cheaper. Um, I don't know what the cost would have been if we had to have it USDA. I'm sure it would be a whole lot more. But it, yeah, because I think they have to have somebody like watch mm-hmm. like the butchering process Has happen. To be stamped. And... Yeah, it's just a, it's a whole nother level. Um, but it is required if you want to sell it. So that was something to note. Yes. Um, but other than that, y'all, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it's given a drive down here. I mean, this is we've done a pig, chickens, cattle for you all now that you all seen and seen our freezers and our excitement. We are so ready for you all to share the same excitement. Um, if you have done this before, shoot us down some numbers below on your uh, in the comments and just see what the comparison is. Yeah. We know we're in Kentucky. We know we have an awesome butcher, but I'm very curious on like what other butchers charge yeah. um, to maybe do some of this stuff. So just that, that helps the community down below in the comments. And if you're watching this because you have that itch inside of you, feed the itch and feed just it. make it happen. Yep, and just fight through all them breakouts and get to this point because this is where it's all worth it. All right, y'all. If you haven't subscribed, make sure to down below. We love y'all. And remember, who day, baby? <laughs> Super Bowl time.